Legends, Blake here with another video and have you seen all of those videos at the moment that seem to be super popular about growing plants above your aquarium? Maybe you've seen people's aquariums and racks with devil's ivy growing all over it or any number of plants really. And if you have, maybe you're wondering the easiest way that you can make it happen, some do's and don'ts and what the options are. So first of all, why would we want to do something like this? For me personally, I think it looks a lot nicer and I like the idea of bringing more nature into the home, but as well as that, it's gonna help with nutrient export. So if you've got additional nitrates contributing to an algae problem like this, then something like a piece of devil's ivy, or as we'll discuss a bit later, there's many, many options. That can just be a little bit of a supercharger to get those extra stuff out of your water. Maybe save you having to do extra water changes and stuff like that. I'd guess that it would also purify the air a bit better in the room, especially if you've got an enclosed space like me in my fish room. Having extra plants around the place definitely can't hurt for, you know, oxygen production and, and stuff like that, getting some fresh air in here. And the roots from a nicely established houseplant can make great cover and sort of artificial spawning mops or artificial natural spawning mops for your fish. So if you've got things like rainbow fish, they'll actually breed in there and it can be awesome because it looks nice, it's effective and you know, it's only helping to contribute to that sort of ecosystem. But in my opinion, there is a little used aspect of being able to grow plants above your aquarium and utilize that nitrogen rich water. And that is that you're able to grow food within your fish room, which I think is just fantastic. Cost of living is going off the chain at the moment. So why not supplement our diets? Maybe we can grow our own herbs and not have to buy frozen or dried herbs, which are gonna be worse anyway. Or we can grow lettuce, make some nice salad and stuff like that. So um, that is something as well that I'll definitely cover in this video. But just quickly, one other awesome aspect of this process is that if you've got a big tank with fish that aren't usually compatible with plants, let's pretend this is like an Oscar or something, Bashirs are generally okay with plants, but you can grow plants and utilize that nutrient export that we usually want from a nice planted tank above the tank and the fish aren't gonna shred up an entire piece of pothos. They might nibble on some roots and stuff like that. But if you've got a big boisterous fish and they're producing heaps of waste and you wanna export that, then this is the way to go because it doesn't matter how many plants you put in the tank, they'll just uproot them, shred them, whatever it is. So um, that is a really helpful aspect to this too. Okay, so at this point we're sold on the benefits and I'm gonna show you the two ways that I believe are the best to, to implement this in your tank. The first one's really simple, but it's mainly just for vining plants and stuff like that. Not stuff that's gonna really grow quite substantial and need a lot more support. Stuff like devil's ivy are gonna be fine in a method like this. As you can see, I'm actually printing one as we speak, I wish it was ready, but I'll show you another example of this, but this is a 3D printed pothos hanger. It just hangs on the side of the tank. You put your vining plant in there and you're ready to go. This one also says Blake's Aquatics on it. I'm not sure if that's obvious or not, but that's the face plate. Here you can see something like this in action in my coffee cup scape. That was my most recent video. Basically, there's just a face plate on the front that slides up and down. You then put your vine plant in roots and all and you're ready to go. You've automatically got some additional nutrient export in the tank, doesn't matter how big or small it is, and that's as simple as it can get. Now, of course, even if you've got something, this is a bit of a dodgy lid setup, but let's just say you've got a corner cut out of a lid, you can absolutely just take the plant and stick it in there. And as long as you don't move the lids regularly, you're fine to do that as well. It's probably, you know, even simpler that way. And to be honest, that's how I started putting these in at the back of my tanks when I first set this fish room up um, a couple of years ago. However, methods like that aren't really going to work for the more substantial plants that you might want to introduce, especially edible plants like lettuce, but things like peace lilies, uh, ferns and all sorts of stuff as well. You're going to need something a little bit more substantial. However, luckily for us, that is still a pretty simple process and I will show you how to do it in the next few minutes. I just need to get some supplies first. So of course, I'm here for a quick trip at the best hardware store slash barbecue restaurant. Let's jump into it. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is come over to here. For 30 bucks, you can pick up this twin wall here, greenhouse panel. It's nice and strong, easy to cut and uh, makes a good uh, replacement lid as well. Next thing we need is some pots to put them in. You can get these clear ones if you want. They're probably gonna get algae over time, 
but for a dollar and one, it's pretty good. Uh, I prefer the black ones. They come in a heap of different sizes. Just take note of the diameter for the hole that we're going to cut later. Or here at my Bunnings, they even have for a dollar eleven these uh, hydro growing pots, which already have a heap of holes in it, which will allow good water flow. But this one's just a bit big for me today, so just get a small one and just drill the holes in it yourself. If you really wanted to get creative, and I guess it is kind of going to be seen in your aquarium, you could pick up whatever colour you like. It doesn't really matter so long as the plastic has had a good rinse and has heaps of holes for good water flow. If it's not obvious, I absolutely hate talking in public, but we push on. Smaller pieces? Yeah, all good, mate. So we've got our foundation in the greenhouse panel. We've got our pots that we're going to put things in, but we can't just have our plants sort of just flopping around. So you have to put something down as the base. You can just use river gravel if you like. You can use scoria if you clean it off and smash it up into smaller pieces. But I think the best thing is this clay pebbles here. You can get a lot bigger bags, but um, I'm not sure exactly where they are today. If I find them on the website, it'll be on the screen. But um, these guys are really good for keeping your plants in place. It's light allows good water circulation. And um, as well as that, you could potentially use perlite, which is also pretty light, but it's just a lot more fine than the clay pebbles. Now, fortunately for me, maybe, but unfortunately for you, my microphone ran out of battery at the end of this video. So I'll put stuff over the screen while we're talking so you still get the visuals. But I was just gonna run you through some of the options that are available in hardware stores for you know, putting things in your tanks. So first of all, if you go to the indoor plant section, that's really great because they have a lot of stuff that's not gonna require high light, that um, is gonna enjoy getting its feet wet, as they say, so having submerged roots. And basically you just wanna look for things that are gonna handle low to medium light and want moderate to high amount of water. So some scientific names to look out for, Devil's Ivy is obviously Epiprenum, uh, also philodendrons I've also used a lot of in the past and they seem to do pretty well. The other ones I've shown in this video as well, uh, Boston Ivy, Creeping Fig, um, any of those sort of bushy creepers are pretty good in my opinion as well. It's also going to depend how much light you have, like if your light is right on the top of your tank, then it's gonna be hard for that light to get to your plants. Whereas if your light is mounted to the top of a rack or something like that, then it's gonna be a lot easier to light those plants. So that's gonna be pretty critical as well. Ferns also work really well. They're an epiphyte plant. So uh, much like Anubius and Java fern, they like having bare exposed roots. So that's great for us in our application here. Uh, pick a smaller fern though, obviously, because some ferns do get quite big. So I like the more small ones and you can check using the tags how big they're gonna get. I think rabbit's foot fern is the one I like the most, but you know, um, check what's available in your local area as to what you might be able to get. Other ones I've mentioned before in this video, peace lily is really great because peace lily loves to have its feet wet, loves heaps of water. So um, a lot of people struggle with peace lily at home just by getting enough water to it. So that's not a problem for us, which is fantastic. And another plant that really loves uh, damp, humid environments are gonna be orchids. Orchids are absolutely stunning. And of course they love heaps and heaps of water. So orchids, orchid, orchids? orchids can be a great option as well if you want something pretty. Rushes are also pretty great. You can buy golden rush and other uh, sort of marsh plants as well, which are gonna be fantastic because essentially that's what we're doing here. Rushes would be a great option. Uh, Lucky Bamboo is a popular one. Just make sure you don't fully submerge Lucky Bamboo. Just uh, submerge the roots only and that's a great option too. And then of course, last but not least, we have edible things. So I mentioned before, lettuces are really great. Uh, they don't mind a bit of cooler weather too. So if your fish room's not running that hot or if you don't have a heated fish room at all, lettuce could be a great option. Uh, best bet is to go to your hydroponics section and see what, um, what plants are there available to grow hydroponically because essentially that's what we're doing. So uh, I did that, I went to the hydroponics aisle and they had uh, the things that you're seeing on the screen now. Typically it'll be a lot of um, herbs and things like that because generally they're very uh, water tolerant. They're not gonna be difficult in terms of setting up a trellis or anything like that. And um, 
yeah, they're just fun. They're not gonna take up a heap of space, be really demanding with uh, maintenance. And with that, obviously we can buy seedlings and tube stock, or you can uh, sprout your own seedlings and then plant them that way. Doesn't really matter, but um, you know, just for speed and to show you today, I've purchased some seedlings for that purpose. As well as that, uh, fruits and vegetables that typically demand a lot of water, things like tomatoes, cucumbers, zucchinis, uh, bell peppers slash capsicums, um, those sorts of things are gonna be great to grow hydroponically as well, which is essentially what we're doing. And um, the only thing is I found chilies to be a bit hit and miss. And of course it's gonna depend on how much space you have available because tomatoes and things like that are gonna get quite tall and you might have to set up a bit of a trellis, but um, things like cherry tomatoes might be a great option if you wanna um, grow those sorts of things within your fish room. And then the other one, you might've seen uh, people growing sweet potato plants outside of the tank, but basically you just take a sweet potato, put it in, it'll grow all these massive roots and a big plant out of the top. And I've definitely done that before, but when it goes wrong, it goes really wrong. And I had a couple of sweet potatoes go really nasty, really mushy, and actually split apart into the tank. The bottom half went in and clouded up all the water. It was a big ammonia problem. So um, if you are gonna go that way, I'd suggest pick a very small sweet potato, or I think you can probably even cut one up and use that and definitely monitor the situation. I think the best bit is once the roots come out, lift the actual sweet potato out of the water and only have the roots in there. But I haven't been brave enough to try it again since I had a bit of a disaster with that. Okay, so now it's time for the demonstration. I'm gonna show you how to turn this kind of boring looking tank into an awesome aquaponics setup. Now, obviously I've got lids on here already that are made from the twin wall. So uh, that is where we're gonna start. I showed you that product anyway. And after this video, I'm gonna lift the light up so that it is attached up under here and is gonna actually light all of our things that we're gonna plant. But also it's a great excuse to show you my new fish that I got uh, last weekend. Got eight of these awesome mascara barbs. I've actually never seen them in real life in Australia and I've seen them often on El Abret's channel. So I was keen to try them out. And I got eight of them here, they're awesome. I got them from Maidstone Pet and Aquarium Warehouse. They're they were so friendly in there. I don't think they really wanted to sell them to me, but I managed to twist their arm and uh, picked up a nice little colony of these. They'll eventually go in the eight foot, but uh, for now, I just put them in here in case I need to medicate them, make sure they eat and all that sort of stuff before they go in with the rest of the fish. But anyway, let's set up a nice little aquaponics setup or hydroponics setup for them. And we'll have some beautiful clean water in this tank in no time. Okay, so as I mentioned, the first thing is to pick up some of these black pots and take note of the diameter of the top. So here I've got 100 mil pots, holes in the bottom. Uh, I didn't say this because it probably has toxic fumes involved, but if you wanna put more holes in this, I'd probably get a soldering iron, let it heat up and go into a well-ventilated area, poke a bunch of holes around the side. But um, for today's purpose, I'm just gonna leave it as is. Then, uh, if you do have them available, get your hole saw bits and pick out the one that's the size, a bit under the size of the edge of your pot here. So if I've got a 100 mil pot, then I'll probably take a 90 mil hole saw bit or um, you know whatever the equivalent is of inches. You know, If you've got a three quarter inch pot, then obviously don't use a three quarter inch hole saw bit because your pot will just fly straight through the bottom and you'll just have a huge hole in your lid, which your fish will jump out of. So definitely don't do that. Um, once you have the right size, so I'll probably go with this one here. Just sit it in there to make sure. Obviously this pot will go through there. It might need to be sanded a bit extra around the edges to just widen it out a bit more. But for now, that is the size hole that we're gonna need. Pretty self-explanatory, but after that, stick it on your drill and drill a hole in the actual twin wall. Good news is, is that since twin wall is just a polycarbonate plastic, it's not that hard to cut into if you don't have a hole saw bit. You can use a strong knife or, you know, be very careful, use a box cutter or a Stanley blade or whatever it is you want to use. But um, yeah, basically we need a method to cut a hole in it. And then before you start cutting, 
It's a good idea if you've got bracing on your tanks, just take a little Sharpie and mark out roughly where the bracing is because there's no point drilling holes where there's gonna be a brace. You're not gonna be able to put any pots in there. So uh, for me, once I've done that, it looks like I'll probably only get two pots in this side, two pots in that side, but that's gonna be plenty for what we wanna achieve here today. Okay, so pretty quickly, we have our twin wall here with four holes in it, and I've just test fit the first pot. It gets about halfway, so it'll be plenty to uh, wet the feet of the plants that we're gonna use. Ideally, it would go all the way through, and maybe a bit later, I'll get in, sand these holes and make them a bit bigger, but I wanna get this video out in a timely manner. So for today, you get the idea, pot goes in the hole. Now, if that pot did go all the way through, at this point, I would half fill the uh, pots with these clay pebbles that I mentioned. Fantastic hydroponic uh, media here. Great one for growing whatever you want. So um, this stuff is just really light. I probably should have pre-soaked this so that it will actually sink because often it's so porous, they'll actually float at the start. So keep that in mind if you're doing a, a big scale version of this. But um, for now, I'll probably just put a handful of these in each pot and then we'll start to put our plants. Also, these can be quite dusty, so give them a good rinse off as well. Welcome to my fish room sink area where it's usually a disaster zone. Uh, I've got this herb mix here, which I'm gonna use to plant out today. Uh, it contains a couple of types of parsley, some thyme, uh, oregano or oregano, some coriander slash cilantro and some dill. Now, I got it discounted because one of these is already dead. I think that's the dill, which is okay, because I don't really like dill that much anyway. So I'm gonna use this. I'm just gonna probably mix them in. I don't really mind if they get combined or anything like that. Actually, it would probably make sense if I got five things, four pots. Let's put the two parsleys together and do it that way. Anyway, to treat these, all you do is gently caress them out of the growing media, probably not directly into a sink, particularly if you've got a spouse at home who's likely to notice a bunch of soil in the sink. So you just basically go around and break as much of the soil off as you can into a bucket, break up these roots a little bit. If you do accidentally sort of um, pull some off, it's not, a, not the end of the world, but you wanna, while it's dry, you wanna get a lot of this little excess soil off. See like that, a lot of this little root ball came off, that's okay. You know, just get it to that sort of level where you can see all these little feeder root or feeler roots and pretty much bulk of the soil is out of there. Then just take some water, like I've got my hose here, and just wash as much of it off as you can. Also, uh, go ahead and rinse off the top as well, just in case there's been any pesticides or anything used on these guys that we don't want to end up in the tank. That is one benefit to using um, seeds that you've sprouted yourself. You know exactly what's going on them. Doesn't have to be perfect, but get it as good as you can. So yeah, just for now, we've got a couple of clay beads in the bottom there holding it in place. The roots are all the way down here at the bottom so that when we put it in, even if the water's not all the way to the top, it's still gonna get water and eventually it will come through the bottom and out the bottom and gets plenty of nice um, nutrient water. So I just went along, repeated the exact same process more times and you can see my little herb planter is ready to go. Super simple, took minutes. They're in there nice and sturdy with those clay beads and in no time, these uh, little crop of herbs will establish, grow nice and strong, and we can add them to whatever we like. We can add them to our cooking. So it's super simple and doesn't take much to create an edible garden in your aquarium. The only real risk, and we've gone over the benefits, but I think it is important, is that since this has been in contact with an aquarium, I believe there is a, a very small risk of salmonella uh, if you do just ingest these herbs raw. So give them a good rinse and you should be fine. As I say, for seasons and seasons, I've grown lettuce out of my ponds and stuff like that. And I've never found it to be an issue, but 
Uh, definitely just give everything a good rinse to stay on the safe side. And this is what the finished product is kind of going to look like. It'll always look the worst the day that you put it in. Uh, and obviously I've got the light dodgily mounted there, but um, I'll formalize that a bit later. But eventually you'll have some beautiful nice roots coming down that the fish will interact with. It will grow up nice and strong. You'll be able to harvest all that. And it's not too um, sort of intrusive. Obviously I need to drop those pots down a little bit as well. I got a bit of work to do after this video is released, but I want to get it out there to you guys. So hopefully you like the video. Hopefully you see just how easy it can be to introduce something like that into your aquarium hobby. And I encourage you to do so. If the video did help you out, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. And other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.